In preparation for our first attempt at performing S-turns, we're going to take a few minutes to discuss the key elements of the maneuver. As with all other maneuvers, an S-turn has three main areas that the pilot needs to concentrate on. Directional control, altitude control, and airspeed control. The primary intent of performing S-turns is to teach pilots how to compensate for the effects of wind on the plane's ground track by using varying bank angles. This means bank control will be the central feature in this maneuver. Heading references will be used more for orientation than for any other purpose because the pilot's attention will be primarily on the reference line and the plane's position relative to it. To break the maneuver down in a simple way, think of it as making two 180 degree turns in opposite directions. The first 180 you will be making is on the downwind side of the reference line. The other is on the upwind side. On the downwind side, the bank will be continually decreasing, and on the upwind side, the bank will be continually increasing. You enter the turn on a downwind. During your first turn, you'll start with your maximum bank, not to exceed 45 degrees, as your wings cross the reference line. As the tailwind changes to a crosswind, and then to a headwind, the bank angle must be reduced accordingly to maintain the symmetry of the turn. Begin reducing that bank in a way that will result in a symmetric half circle. On the upwind side, it's just the opposite. You will start with your minimum bank as your wings cross the reference line and continually increase the bank until right before you cross over the reference line going the opposite direction. At that point, you will need to rapidly roll out the bank so that the wings are level as you cross over the line. Because your ground speed is greater on the downwind portion of each turn, your rate of turn will have to be greater. This means you will have less time to complete those segments of the turn compared to the upwind portions. During this portion of the turn, the nose of the airplane will need to be crabbed progressively towards the reference line to keep the radius of the turn from increasing. On the upwind portion, the airplane will be turned in a crab away from the reference to keep the radius of the turn from decreasing. The stronger the wind, the more noticeable this will be. You should be aware of this aspect of the maneuver and avoid the tendency to try and hurry the upwind portion. Additionally, do not try to hurry or slow the turns by using more or less rudder than that required for proper coordination. Although you can use the rudder to yaw the plane one way or another, failure to maintain proper coordination will be considered unsatisfactory performance. S turns should be performed at 1,000 feet AGL. Establish your altitude prior to entering the maneuver. When directly over the reference line, roll into the first turn, pivoting about a point on the horizon. Use primarily visual references, but also cross-check your instruments to confirm you are maintaining altitude. The primary flight instrument you'll be using to control the pitch is the attitude indicator. Since the bank varies throughout the maneuver, the back pressure on the yoke will have to be increased when flying downwind where you use the greatest bank, and decreased when flying upwind where you use the shallowest bank. Back up the attitude indicator with your altimeter and VSI to maintain your altitude. If you lose or gain altitude, make the appropriate pitch and power adjustments, but do not change the bank angle from what is required to complete the maneuver satisfactorily. The airspeed to be used for S turns is 100 knots. Once you have selected your reference line and are established at 1000 feet AGL, set the power to approximately 2200 RPM to maintain 100 knots. Trim the airplane for that speed. A slight increase in power may be necessary if you roll into 30 degrees or more of bank, but be sure to reduce that power when the bank is less than 30 degrees. Normally, only small power adjustments will be needed to maintain the airspeed within 10 knots of the entry speed. In order to begin the maneuver, you must select a suitable ground reference line based on the direction of the wind. The reference line must be perpendicular to the wind so that the maneuver can be performed as required by the PTS. The reference line should also be long enough to allow the airplane to make at least one complete S-turn. For safety purposes, there should be no other airplanes in the general vicinity and an emergency landing site should be available in case a forced landing is required. Prior to beginning the maneuver, position the airplane so that it's upwind from the reference line. When you're ready to start the maneuver, establish 100 knots and 1,000 feet AGL, then turn directly downwind so that the plane will be perpendicular to the reference line as it crosses over it. Note the heading you are flying. When the plane is directly over the road, roll into your steepest bank not to exceed 45 degrees. It is recommended that you make the first turn to the left so that you have a better view of the ground track, but a turn in either direction is permissible. 
As the plane turns, the bank will need to be reduced gradually to keep the radius of the turn constant. Remember the ground speed of the airplane determines how much bank will be needed. The faster the ground speed is, the steeper the bank required. The slower the ground speed is, the shallower the bank required. As the plane passes through the 90 degree point of the turn, note your distance from the reference line. This is the same distance that you will need to be on the upwind side of the reference line. From this point, the bank will continue to be gradually reduced so that the plane is perpendicular to the reference line as you cross over it. The heading indicator should also indicate 180 degrees from the heading you were on when you entered the maneuver. Now that the plane is flying directly into the wind, your ground speed is at its lowest, which means the bank angle will be at its shallowest. Roll in the bank at a rate that will allow the plane to get the same distance from the reference line as you were on the downwind side. For the last 90 degrees of the turn, the bank will be increased as the ground speed increases. Just prior to reaching the reference line, the bank will need to be rolled out rapidly so that the wings are level just as the plane crosses the line. After completing the second turn, set the cruise power, retrim as necessary, and complete the cruise checklist. Now that we've covered how to fly the maneuver, let's look at the end goals for your skills for S-turns. Some of the standards for the end of course checkride include Select a suitable ground reference line Plan the maneuver as to enter at 600 to 1000 feet AGL perpendicular to the selected reference line Apply adequate wind drift correction to track a constant radius turn on each side of the selected reference line Reverse the direction of the turn directly over the selected reference line Divide attention between airplane control and the ground track while maintaining coordinated flight. Maintain altitude plus or minus 100 feet. And maintain airspeed plus or minus 10 knots.